So today we're going to be showing you guys what we think is the best way to set up a DC charging system in your caravan. Righto, so check this rig out. Brand new Ford Ranger Wild Track in the Solar and Sat Workshop. Last week we did a system on this customer's base station caravan, Jayco Base Station. He's picked up the brand new vehicle on Friday, the new Ranger Wild Track. Awesome vehicle. We're going to be setting this vehicle up for the DC charging that we've put in the caravan. So in the caravan, we've put two 30 amp Orion DC chargers, um, Victron. We'll put that in the front tunnel boot of the caravan. And obviously we've got to be able to charge through those DC chargers to the auxiliary battery system. We need to run a cable from this vehicle. So usually we would run something like 13 millimeter squared, which is this cable here. That's good for all of your usual cable runs to a 50 amp Anderson plug at the back. That'll run just about anything because it's 100 amps. It's rated to 100 amps. Because we've fit two 30 amp DC chargers, we, we want to minimize the voltage drop and use the biggest cable we can. So here we've got some 32 millimeter squared. Get away with using 25, that's good. But just look at the size difference in that compared to 13. Like I said, 13 millimeter squared, still pretty big. A lot of auto electricians and people think, oh, I'll just use six millimeter, I'll just use eight millimeter and end up having to take it all out and run a new cable again. So that's why we're gonna do it once, do it right. Use that 32 millimeter squared, it's rated for up to 190 amps. And that'll just reduce that voltage drop from the start, start of battery here all the way to the caravan. So depending on where your system is in your caravan, you've got to run six to seven meters on the vehicle and then another five to six meters on the van. So we want the voltage back at the van to be the same as what it is up here. So say it's 12.8 up here, we want it to be 12.8 down there. If you've got six millimeters or eight millimeters squared, you might end up with a large amount of voltage drop and then your chargers won't be working how they should be. So that's just explaining why we use the heavy size cable that we do. We'll be running that all through a 100 amp OEX relay that'll be mounted underneath the bonnet. Now that's ignition triggered through a tap off fuse. Basically, as soon as you turn that key in your, in your car, your vehicle starts, that Anderson plug at the back is then live. As soon as you turn it off, it's off. You can't drain your starter battery. It's a 120 amp Anderson plug because we're using such heavy cable. We're gonna be running it through a mega fuse holder underneath the bonnet through a 100 amp mega fuse. That's never gonna get hot. You don't have to worry about it. You could, the other substitute, run it through a midi fuse holder. Same again, you can rate these pretty high and they don't get hot. That Anderson plug at the back there is gonna be mounted on one of these um, plates. Keep it nice and neat. That just gets mounted to the standard 12 pin plug. Over here, this is what you'll see a lot of people use on their vehicles. So six millimeter squared, eight, 10 millimeter squared blade fuse holders. These get hot, especially under the bonnet, especially when you're running them at high current. So a lot of people use these for fridges. A three-way fridge might pull 20 amps. You got a 30 amp blade fuse in there, that'll melt, it'll get hot and it won't work. We see this a lot. I'll show you one that we've seen just this morning of a vehicle that's come in and we're gonna change that now to a midi fuse holder. So like I said before, it's just good to just do it once, do it right, use all the good quality gear so you don't end up having to buy it all twice. Where we make our connection on the vehicle like I said, it's got a smart alternator. Most dual cab four wheel drives after 2017 have a smart alternator. So we've got to use that ignition triggered relay and we'll be making our connections right here for our positive. Ford's made it nice and easy for us. We've got two spare spots. And then we'll be making the negative connection just here to the body. Like I said, it is a smart alternator. We don't want to be mounting our negative there. It'll throw all the readings out for the starter battery. This won't get charged properly and it won't charge your auxiliary battery properly. So we'll get that up on the hoist. We'll run those two big cables all the way through, put them in their own separate conduit, and then we'll be mounting that Anderson plug plate at the back here. Just joins onto that 12 pin, nice and easy for when the customer wants to connect. Another question I might get is, what if the alternator doesn't put out up to 50, 60 amps? These Victron DC chargers can throttle back. So say the alternator only wants to put out 50 amps, they'll throttle back to 25 amps each and you'll still be getting that maximum amount of current that you can get out of the alternator, so a pretty neat system. So we're over here in Craig's work area. He's doing a DC cable run on this D-Max as well. Um, and like I spoke about, he's using the 13.5 millimeter squared. Perfect, more than enough. Um, and he's run it off the starter battery there through an ignition tap relay, which is what he's doing in here. And then same again through a MIDI fuse holder 
like we spoke about. So 80, 80 amp fuse in there, cables rated to 100, more than enough. Um, he's run it down in some conduit, all on the chassis there, all secured, nice and protected. And then same again to a plate back here. So yeah, he's put it through a 50 amp Anderson plug on a weatherproof cover back there. Nice and easy for the customers to get to. It's done once, done right, the customers won't have to do it again. So if you guys have any questions about how to set up a DC charging system in your caravan, come and see the team down at Solar and Sat Bundaberg. Yeah.